Welcome to Ship and Sip. I'm your host, Erin, and I manage ShipStation's community, a place where users like you can network, share tips and tricks, and help each other solve complex workflow problems. Today, we're going to be speaking with the amazing Kindle Lowenberg, a ShipStation account manager, and the awesome automation guru for channel advisor, uh, Allison Held, who is the senior product manager at Channel Advisor. Uh, before we get started, I want to give a huge thank you to our sponsors, Channel Advisor and SKU Vault, for sponsoring today's event. Uh, Allison, can you tell us a little bit about Channel Advisor? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to. I uh, just wanted to start out saying, like, thanks for having me and my dogs who are living in the background um, to, to the event. Um, Channel Advisor is, is effectively a technology platform coupled with about 20 years of e-commerce expertise. We just had our 20 year anniversary last month. So that was pretty cool. We help basically across three main areas of your business, streamlining e-commerce operations, uh, expanding to new channels, and then optimizing to grow sales. So effectively we enable our customers to connect to hundreds of global marketplaces, retail and dropship um, connections and digital marketing channels. And we can market products with better content, pricing management, and support for marketplaces and retail advertising programs. But we also aggregate orders from all of those direct sales channels and online marketplaces um, to help brands basically enable sales from product pages, digital advertising, through all of your partnerships. So super robust platform. Um, our platform also monitors performance to help optimize operations so that our customers can invest in channels that are working and make appropriate changes to help them grow um, and spend less time on channels that aren't working. We also have a service team of e-commerce experts positioned uh, to provide strategic guidance for attacking the market and strategy execution so that no matter where you are in your e-commerce journey, uh, you can engage with them in a way that makes the most sense for your business, whether that's just consulting or actually implementing um, a managed marketplace service, um, hands on keyboards on the channel advisor side to help your business grow. E-commerce is a fierce industry. It's constantly changing in the landscape and we love being on this journey with our clients. That's amazing. It sounds like you guys really offer so much more. You take it to the next level. And I think that's what a lot of people need because people don't have, like most people, I'm not going to say all, don't have someone advising them and being like, oh, let's take a look at all of our sales reports and get that into a Google Doc and then another one and then a sheet and then reporting. You guys are kind of taking some of that burden off of your users, which is amazing. Yeah, it's an awesome space. I love it. It changes every day. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I, I'm sure everybody is super grateful for that information. And if you aren't using Channel Advisor, maybe check them out. Um, just a reminder, we'll be doing a Q&A at the end of this panel discussion. So please make sure to submit any questions you have in the comments section. We will be giving away three free months of ShipStation subscription to one lucky audience member that asks us a question. So make sure to submit a question in the comments section to be entered to win. Also, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping before we get to the good stuff here. Um, make sure that your mic is muted um, at all times just to make it easier for our lovely panelists to be able to hear what's going on and to speak. And aside from that, I think we're, I think we're ready. So, um, Kindle, I would like to start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience in e-commerce? Yes, so I actually didn't start in e-commerce until I started with ShipStation. So most of what I've learned has all been here and I jumped into it and was excited to learn. Um, a little bit about myself is, you know, I am a mother to a three-year-old rowdy little girl and um, love to go swim in, love to, you know, hang out, go to the beach. So definitely, you know, like to spend outdoors on the weekends since we've been working from home so much. Yeah. That's, yeah. Oh my goodness. You have a little three major, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Three-year-old turning into definitely a, a young little woman. <laughs> 
All right. So uh, same question to you, Allison. I'd love to hear a little bit more about you. I know you spoke about Channel Advisor, but I'd love to hear about you and your experience in e-commerce. Yeah, sure. So, um, so I'm a senior product manager at Channel Advisor, which basically means that um, I'm responsible for research and product direction for e-commerce destinations like Amazon and eBay fall under my purview, as well as digital marketing channels um, like Facebook and Google. So I work directly with our partners um, at those sites, our clients, and our internal channel advisor teams to understand industry trends and optimize features for our customers. Uh, before moving into the product management role, I worked with brands and retailers directly to establish and expand their online presence on a variety of marketplaces um, using the Channel Advisor platform. I also have, um, I have two kids. I have a five-year-old who just started kindergarten. It was wild. I dropped him off with a whole bunch of strangers. Like, <laughs> Best of luck getting getting in there on your own. Um, and I also have a three year old, and I have two uh, dogs. So my house is a circus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But there's never a dull moment. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you guys both for sharing uh, with me. Kindle, how long have you been with us at Chip Station, and what's your favorite automation role? So in August, we'll mark my two years of being at ShipStation. Um, I did first start in support, went over to um, a little bit of like our phone team, and then now have moved over to an account manager position. And my uh, favorite rule, aside from setting just like a carrier based on the order weight, um, I would actually have to say adding insurance to your high volume packages so like with that, you can go into like your products tab, add some different order tags to just like those certain, you know, products that you know need insurance. And then with a rule, just base it off that order tag. And, you know, that right there, you won't have to worry about any of those high volume shipments because it's already going to have it applied to them. Right. Yeah, that's, that's really smart. Um, automation rules happen to me, but my favorite too, when I started here, I was all about it. So I can definitely relate uh, with that. And I know that you're gonna show us some um, a little bit later in our presentation here. Um, Allison, I know you kind of touched on what you've been doing with Channel Advisor, but how long have you been with Channel Advisor and what is your favorite feature? So I have been um, working in e-commerce for almost a decade. This is my ninth year um, at Channel Advisor. Channel Advisor is a huge platform. It's got so many capabilities. <laughs> That's a really hard question. Um, <laughs> I love things that help our customers scale though. Um, if I had to pick one, I would probably say our business rule capability. Um, it can do some really awesome things. It's basically like custom Excel formulas within Channel Advisor. So it can like take the word navy and transform it to the word blue, depending on what the channel accepts. It can do things like um, changing your Amazon shipping template at a certain time of day because you no longer want to fulfill that order via Prime um, if you're doing seller fulfilled Prime, for example. So um, that's probably my favorite feature because you can write some crazy ones and I just kind of like to see how hard of a problem I can solve with it. <laughs> that is so cool. I love I love that uh, formula. Like for me, when I started um, working in e-commerce, I was horrible at Excel and formulas and spreadsheets. And so if I had something like that, that would have been amazing. Um, so that's really awesome. Um, Kindle, I know that we said we were gonna show today, do some show and tell. Can you show us how to do a new order email notification rule? Yes, so let me go ahead and just share my screen. Um, awesome, here we go. Can everybody see this? Yep, it looks good. Awesome, so just to kind of clarify of how you would actually get here. So you'd go um, to the gear icon in the upper right, and then you can just go to this add automation rules or automation on that left-hand side. 
And so for the for new order import, that's what we're going over, right? Yeah, for the new order imported, um, you would actually first need to create a new template. So I just come over to this templates on the left hand side, go to the emails, and I just created like a very quick one that says, hey, you know, new order has imported. Here's that order information. And then just a quick login. So whenever you get that email, you can log in and you already know which order number you're going to be processing. And if anybody would also like any of this information, um, I'll put my email in the like chat below, and then I can just send y'all some of this information too. And also we will host some of it on the community after as well. Oh. So you can go to community.chipstation as well and benefit from Kindle's amazing knowledge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, thank you for showing us that. Now, uh, now that we're in here, are there any rules that you feel like are overlooked or uh, underrated? Um, yeah, aside from, you know, one that I kind of went over was like ensuring your high volume packages. So here, you know, you can go into your products tab to add that different tag for your products. And then, you know, just insuring it with ship insurance. It is a whole lot cheaper insurance and uh, they do actually insure a lot of things that like the carrier won't. So, you know, they are great in that. And then um, actually billing to a third party. So a mistake a lot of people make is that they don't set the carrier service um, and package type first, which needs to be done in order for the option to charge to a third party to appear. So, you know, with automation rules, you can definitely stack a lot of these um, different actions or even different criteria. So for example, like with the first class mail, if you do have a lot of international orders, a great one is to say, hey, if the order weight's less than the 15 ounces and it's not international, to set this service and package type. That's so handy. That's such, that's such an important rule, um, 100%, especially with the third party, because a lot of the time, um, people don't know that they can do that. And it's super useful, especially when you're fulfilling on behalf of someone else. Exactly. Yeah. That's why it's also great where just like all the different criteria, you can just, you know, base it on like the recipient, if it's the same, same person every time. Um, so that's a great thing to use for that too. Yeah. Oh, another quick one. Ooh. Um, if you do want to kind of see which addresses are not being verified, just so you can jump on those a lot quicker. You can say, hey, if the address verification um, includes a warning, and this is another thing where I had to go into the templates and create a quick, you know, address not verified template. But, you know, there's some great things you can do with this just to kind of be ready for those orders to go out at a certain time. And that's, that's super helpful because that doesn't go to the customer that trigger goes only to you automatically. Yeah. Now, if I wanted to get super extra here, would there be another thing that I could do like to flag it in our system, like maybe a tag or something you'd be able to add? Oh, of course. So if I already had a tag, then I could say, hey, I wanna send an email to me to myself and we're gonna add another action, you know, add a tag and you know, we could go and create another tag that would say, you know, that it's, it has a warning on the address. And then a great thing with that is whenever you're in your orders tab, you can just go by the different tags, say, hey, I wanna see all of the orders with this one, you know, criteria, be able to process those all at once. Awesome, yeah, that's, that's really nice. If we go back to um, automation, I noticed a, a question here that I kind of wanted to address right now and kind of skip ahead. Can you go back into that role for us? The address not verifying? Now, what other options do our customers have? Is it just warning or so? so is, yeah, verified warning and error. I have, you know, tested between, cause you know, of course if it's verified you don't really need to know about that. Right. So I have tested between the warning and the error and I'm not too sure why but the error doesn't seem to catch everything. 
Mm -hmm. um, but this warning does. So this warning is more of like a catch all in just of what, you know, that address itself is not valid. Awesome. That's, that's really cool. Um, if, since we might have a quick second here, can you show me what that template looks like? Yeah. Created or just to show them how they can create their own. Let's see. So here, um, so all I did to create this was click this new shipment, you know, email template. Mm -hmm. And then I just added, you know, this information. So subject would just be address not verified. And then it's going to give you the order name and the actual address. Um, I don't know why I have that tracking number there because that wouldn't apply. But yeah, so it'll have like the actual address where we actually do have, let's see. So if you go to our address validation, you can then come into here. So if it is a domestic address, it's going to go with this USPS address validation. Mm -hmm. If it's international, you can validate with this Melissa database. So here, you know, say you get that email, you could actually even include this link within the email. So then that way, whenever you see that address, you just click here, you can plug in the address and it's gonna tell you why it's not verified. That's awesome, yeah. That's a really good tool. And we'll be including that um, in our post on the community after this as well. So you guys can look out for that. Um, what would you say is the biggest mistake or misstep you've seen people make when implementing, autom wow, implementing automation rules? I'm just broken rules in general, or I'm kind of like with, you know, billing to the third party, you know, not selecting like a carrier service package type before applying a, um, like a other shipping option. Right. So what I mean by that is, you know, if I came into here and some of these other shipping options are going to only be specific to the actual carrier you're utilizing. So say if I wanted to, you know, say there's any additional handling or the shipment includes dry ice, I'm going to first need to say which carrier package I'm using. Because if you look, if I deselect that, mm -hmm. it's not going to give me those options. Right. So that's one thing to you know be on the lookout for is if I'm not seeing the options here before I select that carrier, then that automation rule is most likely not going to work. That's that's 100 percent fair. Um, just from my experience too, like, I mean, no one wants to hear from me, but, <laughs> um, uh, I've seen personally people doing, um, like areas or zip codes they don't want, and they'll do it in each individual rule instead of, um, putting it in and doing like a semicolon. It's a semicolon, right? Or is it a comma? Um, it would just be a comma in that case. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh you know, there definitely are tons of different options to be able to utilize. Um, I think, let me go over the chats and I can kind of go over Kendall, some of it the seems like there's a lot of people who are interested in the tags for the order tags. Maybe it would be great to touch on a few use cases for tags and automation rules for how to use tags, potentially. Yes. So typically before I even start the role, I like to just go into my products and you can go to the products and manage your tags here. And so if I wanted to, you know, add any additional tags, I can definitely do that right there. And, you know, you have all these options of colors. So we'll say, hey, you know, we have some on back order. So I'll come in here. We'll just say, you know, these orders right here, they're on back order right now. So. Um, we need to go and place them on hold. So then I can, after they've been tagged, I can come over to my automation rules to create a rule. And so since I've already created those tags, I can say, hey, I want it to match this specific criteria, which would be order tags include back order. Oops, my bad. 
And then down here, I can just say, hey, I want to hold it until, you know, we're not getting that product for another two weeks. So let's go ahead and actually, we'll just say, you know, August 3rd. Mm -hmm. So if we go ahead and save that, then as new orders are importing, it's going to automatically put them on hold over in here. If I did want that to apply to my current open orders, you can just say, hey, let's go ahead and reprocess these automation rules. And it's going to apply to all of those currently open orders. Right, and somebody in the chat had been asking about how to tag high value and um, wanted to know if there's a way to automate that. There currently is not a way to automate it. Um, and that's mainly because ShipStation doesn't have access to like what the um, items pricing would be right away. So you would just need to come in to the actual item and you can even add multiple tags too. Right. So yeah, so here, you know, if you do, I'd say if you do have like a lot of high volume products um, and you do want to be able to easily tag those, then, you know, if you're creating those different SKUs, you can base it on the SKU itself, or if the product name, you know, has something like HV in it, or, you know, some, some indicator, then you could actually create a rule that would tag those. But essentially, we'll, we would need like an indicator of which items are actually high volume. Right. Now, as the order as a whole in the um, home, the homepage, the uh, order dashboard, order display grid here, there would be a way to create a view, right? Where you could sort by total order value, right? Yeah, like you could definitely, you know, have a rule based on the, um, the whole order value itself. So you could say like the order total is greater than or equal to, you know, a certain amount. And then, um, you know, instead of insure, just, you know, add a tag, but that would be, you know, for that order itself, if they're referring to just like the actual products, um, you know, that would be a little bit more difficult to see like the individual, you know, product. Right. percent. Thank you yeah, for uh, going over that. Um, now let's chat about our latest updates. Can you tell us a little bit more um, about the new tax ID rule that we have available? Yeah, we actually even have it under our automation rule examples now. Um, yeah, which would be, you know, applying that tax ID number um, to your orders. So, you know, it's great. We even have this uh, article that kind of goes over it in general. So, you know, you go through to create a rule and here you can, you know, set it to certain countries to then set those tax um, identifications. So where you would add those is, you know, once again, if you don't see this, click that gear icon, shipping on that left-hand side, and then your international settings. So here you would be able to add the different um, tax ID types. And once these are all added, um, you would be able to come up to your automation rules and use those to apply those different tax IDs. And then, you, you know, you can definitely do it based on just the country. So you know which IDs are going to be um, included for which country. Right. Now, um, what does, um, I'm just going to skip ahead to this question because it's super relevant right now. Uh, what does adding the tax ID number do for us in ShipStation? What does that help with? Um, I believe it's more for your tax purposes whenever you um, are shipping those. And let's see, we also do have another article that kind of explains all of that. Because um, I believe this is more specific to um, shipping international orders. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, see, it's all related to your tax um, activities. So, you know, within the US, we typically use like an EIN, employee identification number, um, and, but other countries use like the TIN. So 
just to make sure your tax records are up to date and the most accurate is why you should, um, why and when you should use these. Um, one more question here. Can you add two tax IDs, for example, an IOSS and an EORI for Europe? I believe you should be able to, let's see. Tax identificators. Yeah, it should give you the option to add those. Let me go. Let me go try and add it to an actual order. And you know what we can do if we can't get it right away, we can uh, create some videos to go along with our post um, for you, Kristen, so you can check it out. So uh, we, will, we will put that on our to-do list and make sure that you check community.shipstation.com and uh, we, will, we will get you covered. Um, next, uh, my next question here is for Allison. Hi, Allison. <laughs> how does automation and ShipStation relate to Channel Advisor and how can they work together? Yeah, so we actually have um, quite a few customers, joint customers between ShipStation and Channel Advisor, um, or the ship entities in Channel Advisor. <laughs> Typically, our customers will use Channel Advisor to automate and scale the listing process, whether that's multi-site or multi-country listings. So being able to really harness that catalog data that Kendall mentioned earlier, um, that's typically what lives in our system. So it's multi-quantity propagation across a whole bunch of sites um, or content changes like sizing or color or title or description across a whole bunch of different channels. So you load that catalog data into our system and then we send that out to a whole bunch of different channels and sites that you wanna sell on. And then they will leverage automation like repricing or advertising bid optimization, for example, on um, to automate and make that process more efficient. And then when those orders start to flow back in from those channels, they've connected to ShipStation so that they can process right away on the warehouse side with those updates coming through um, to ShipStation. You have that same process you do today for fulfilling those orders. Um, it's just coming through Channel Advisor um, for those multiple sites. And then when you put the tracking number, all of that relevant information, goes back to Channel Advisor and then out to all the individual channels that you connect to today. So you can still use all of those really cool rules that Kendall talks about from an automation perspective. Um, for the actual fulfillment portion, Channel Advisor sits kind of on the front end of that and then on the other side to connect out to the channels directly um, to all of those well over 100 marketplaces globally. <laughs> Wow, that, that seems like it streamlines like the automation process even before it gets into ship Yeah, like, exactly. You guys are already straining everything. So when it gets to us, you, your, our users, our mutual users uh, have a better chance of, you know, getting things sorted so they don't have to go back through and edit orders and all of that because they've already done it with your rules. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, that's awesome. That's goals right there. <laughs> um, before and I did, did test it. You can't apply more than, you know, one tax identifier um, to an order. Oh, so, yeah, that is completely possible. Awesome. Where, where would they do that? Do you mind sharing your screen again? Yes. Awesome. See, we're flexible here at Ship and Sip. <laughs> so I first quickly just, um, went over to my shipping international settings and I just created some different tax identificators or identifiers. Went over to my orders um, just to kind of test it real quick to see my international. And then when you scroll down here, you'll see the tax identifier. You can select the different ones here. So you can either you know manually do it on an order to apply those different ones or if you were doing it through an automation rule, you can say, you know, if the um, country includes 
you know, go through and just choose some international options, then set tax identifiers. And then you can select multiple here. Perfect. Awesome. That's that's amazing. So Kristen, there it is. We'll make sure to post uh, something and some visuals for everybody on the community um, after the presentation as well. Um, just a fun little reminder here. Uh, we are about to do the last question that I ask, and then we are going to shift all the way into the Q&A section. So I recommend if you are looking to win today, you could be winning three months of ShipStation subscription for free. And uh, all you have to do is set a question in the chat and we will hopefully answer and get to your questions. So um, without further ado, just get those questions in. My final question is for Kindle. Uh, for people that are new to automation, what resources would you recommend? Oh, you're okay. Number one resource um, I always like to recommend is checking out our automation rules, examples, help article. Because not only does that have, you know, some general um, examples, it also kind of explains, you know, kind of like what you were saying earlier, Erin, um, when to use a comma or when to use a semicolon what those differences mean. So uh, I can even, you know, kind of share this too. Let me go over this. This was the one that I kind of pulled up earlier that already even goes over, you know, like the tax identifiers and, you know, like applying the different services based on the weight. So definitely some great rules right here. And then if you scroll down, you'll see on the left-hand side, a lot more, uh, articles that go over some, you know, advanced rules and, you know, what the different criteria and actions mean. Right. Perfect. That's a great resource. Um, Allison, I would also be curious what resources you would recommend to users on the channel advisor side. Yeah, absolutely. So we have um, a knowledge base online for all of our help content for really how to automate. But um, if you're interested in learning more about Channel Advisor, then for sure, reach out to us. Um, I'm sure we'll follow up with um, that in the, the email after the event. And we're more than happy to have a conversation about um, if Channel Advisor is the right fit, if, if you're at the point in time in your e-commerce journey where you need to kind of help scale through automation and efficiency um, for, for a provider like Channel Advisor, that would be a great next step. Perfect. That, that's a great resource. So anyone, if you're, you're curious, uh, we will be sending out an email with all of this good information. There'll be some stuff on the community posted as well to help you out. Um, so now without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to questions from you guys. And the first question here is um, for insurance. Uh, this comes from Michael for insurance. What happens if the courier, the courier tracking says delivered, but the customer states that they didn't receive this? Kindle, did you want to take that one? Yeah. Um, typically, you can still submit a claim. They are, you know, they will look into it, but you know that one kind of is. is up to the carrier in that case, um, especially if they are saying it's delivered. So that's why I always recommend, you know, adding insurance to your packages, because especially like with that ship insurance, you know, should still be able to cover something like that. So definitely, yeah. you know, yeah, add insurance. And ship insurance is not that that crazy expensive. It's just, oh, it, a, yeah, it's really cheap. It's another layer of protection, basically. <laughs> But yes, definitely, Michael would submit a claim to the, the carrier and let them know. Um, like Kindle said, it is up to them at that point. Uh, but having extra insurance never really hurts. Let's see. OK, this one, um, da, da, da. can you put in an automation rule to notify uh, when the address verification has changed the address. So not currently, correct, Kindle? No. Since, yeah, I think the reason with that is automation rules run right when the order is importing. So in that case, 
for address verification to actually apply, it would have had her to import um, and then apply. So it would, I don't, I don't know if that really makes sense, but essentially as it's importing, that automation rule and the address verification are running at the same time. So it's not going to catch both. Right. That's kind of a, a tricky spot to be in. Yeah. Uh, but if you're ever, like if you're ever worried about address verification or um, things like that, you can uh, turn it off and do it manually. I know it's a little bit more work, but if you're worried about, uh, about that becoming a problem, you can go into your selling channel settings. Is it selling channel? It's by selling channel, correct? Correct. You can go into your selling channel and turn that off for all orders. And then you could just go through and do it manually. If and that you could works. even say, hey, I just want it turned off for domestic shipments or international. That's that's awesome. I think that's really important. Um, let's go to our next question here. This, uh, can we have an automation rule to notify us if a customer has another order awaiting shipment so we can bind the shipments? Um, so we have order alerts for that, um, which, you know, if you log into your ShipStation account, let me share my screen real quick. Oh, perfect. Yes, definitely do. So, you could either see your order alerts up here, or if you're under your orders tab, you'd be able to scroll down on this left-hand side and see the order alerts over here. And then this will give you the option. It will show you, you know, which customer, how many orders. And if you just click on it, it's gonna show you all of their orders where you can then combine them there. Perfect. So hopefully, hopefully that answered your question. Thank you for sharing that and showing us. I'm a visual learner, so I appreciate all this screen sharing. <laughs> um, next question, we've had trouble making different return addresses appear on labels other than our primary store. Is it possible to automate orders to a specific user from different stores? Example, XYZ store goes to user A, ABC goes to user B. Yes. So. In that case, let me go ahead and share again. Just when you thought you were done. <laughs> <laughs> so in that case, um, you can come up in, you know, a couple different things. You can say, hey, the store, you know, is these stores, or if you want to say the actual marketplace, which would be, you know, if you had multiple Shopify stores or big commerce, you could just use, you know, that in general. Um, so the store, you know, includes, we'll just say Kindle store, and then um, you could come down here and, you know, apply those different options. Perfect. That's, that's really a cool yeah, thing so, to utilize, especially when you've got repeat customers that you know need specific, um, specific items that are only in one chip from location. Correct. So, you know, even with this, if the store is, you know, my Kindle store, I want to assign it to um, myself and have a certain ship from location already selected. So, yeah, that right there, that would probably solve that. It's super helpful. Next question we have here, is there a way to change the zip code that you are shipping from but keep the same return address? Yes. Um, well, in a sense. So let's see. So if you come to your ship from locations, the location you're adding right here, that's not actually going to be what's on the label. What's on the label is this return address. So if you know you have a you know your home address right here, as long as you you know say hey this is not the same as a ship from you know, you can put a different address here, which will appear on your label. And this is what your customers will see. Perfect. Yeah, that, that is a really good feature, especially when it comes to returns. Um, because I know a lot of people have like a shipping warehouse and then they have a different location for receiving and things like that. Yep, and then also, um, Another thing, so I know I've come across a lot of users who actually ship out of their home 
And so they have that address here because if you want to schedule a pickup, it's going to use this address. And then, you know, they have a post office box for, you know, all of their returns. Well, when you do a post office, you want to make sure to, for the street one, to put the actual address of the post office and then your PO box as street two. Nice. Awesome. Okay. So our next question here is going to be, is there a split feature where all incoming orders can be split into separate shipments based on the product in the order? I.e. we have two warehouses that ship to different items and it would be amazing to have them auto split between the two warehouse locations. Yeah, they're working on that feature, but it's currently not released. Um, we have come across some complications with it. So we just wanna make sure it's fully ready before we send it out. But in that case, I just recommend going, um, tagging some of your products. So if you know, hey, this SKU always needs to be split, you know, you can add a tag. And then that way, when you come to your orders, you can just look at your tags column and then know which orders you need to go in and manually split. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's a good that's a good workaround. But as she said, it's it's in the in the works behind the scenes. It's uh, just part in our dust right now. We're we're working it out. Um, and let's see the next question here: Is it possible to sync tags in Shopify with tags in ShipStation? So with Shopify tags, um, let's see, we can definitely get those imported. I believe they are order tags, oh, customer tags, let's see, and order tags. So what happens with that is when it imports, it's going to import into a custom field, whichever one you select. And then with that, you can then say, hey, if, this order has, you know, custom field one, you know, includes what your tag name is, then you can add, you know, a tag within ShipStation. So with, yeah, with Shopify tags, which would be the customer or order tags, you're gonna need to base the rule off of the custom field. And then you can manually add that tag in Ship, or you can automatically add that tag in ShipStation. That's awesome. You're like, you're like an automation ninja. You know everything. <laughs> so, so awesome. Uh, Rosanna says, uh, does the placement of where rules fall in the list matter? Yes. So you can move these around all you want. Um, rules are going to apply from the top down. So if I have, you know, a couple of, um, different rules that are gonna apply different services. Say I want, you know, if anything is under a pound, I want that to apply first, but I have another rule that if it's under a pound, but a, you know, certain value, then I wanna apply like a priority service. So, you know, the second rule, which would be that priority one, that would then override this first class mail on specific orders. You know it wouldn't necessarily encase all orders, but that way, you know, they're applying from the top down. So if you do have a rule that you want to for sure be applying every time, bring it down to the bottom. So that way, um, you know, these will all run first and that's gonna be your last one. Perfect. Now, if, if somebody were running into say trouble with our automation rules, what steps would you recommend? Like if this X rule isn't running, what would you have, you know, if this were a support call when you were in support, what would you have somebody do? First thing I like to do is pull up an example order that would, that, you know, rule would apply to. And then you're gonna check the different criteria. So here I could say, you know, the order weight is less than or equal to 15 ounces. You can then come check the order and say, yes, that is true. Then you can go down to the next one. Is it also an international order? So if you're looking at this rule, it must meet both of these criteria in order for this to apply. 
So if I came back in here, nope, it's not international, it's going right down the street, then this rule should be applying. So um, let's see. One way you can also check is if you click on the order and scroll down, you can go to the shipment activity and it's gonna tell you, so here the rule first class mail applied to this. So if you don't see it applying, you know, a quickest way that I usually check is, you know, the tab you have pulled up, just go and duplicate that tab. So you can look at this rule, you can look at the specific order, you know, make sure all that criteria is matching. And then if it's not working at that point and you think for sure it should be applying, um, another quick testing way is pull it to the very bottom, reprocess your automation rules, and then that makes sure that no other rules were interfering with that rule. And then you'd be able to double check, hey, did it actually apply now? If it didn't, the rule itself is most likely broken. And so you know, in that case, you can just try to create a new rule or reach out to our support team. Perfect, thank you for, for expanding on that. I know that's super helpful. Uh, I, next question is for Allison. Uh, Allison, does Channel Advisor connect with QuickBooks? So yeah, we do have customers who use QuickBooks for their inventory system of record, um, and they have a connection uh, via a partner called T-Hub into Channel Advisor um, so that all of that information can flow back and forth via API from the QuickBooks system to Channel Advisor. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Kindle, is there a way for the cost of uh, to see the cost of ship insurance based on the value of the order? Um, so typically the way that I just check is, you know, on an order itself. Um, so if you just came down here, you know, it's 346 right now. If I went ahead and added ship insurance, you know, see it should update there. I don't remember the exact um, like dollar per mile. It's actually probably won't go up too much. So let's see. Oh, here we go. So it looks like here are the insurance rates. Where, where are you viewing them? Or are you just on? Yeah, so if you go and just, you know, the quickest way to view it is if you pull up an order, just uh, select ship insurance as an option. And then this little um, info eye that pops up, click on that and it's going to open up the new tab that goes over the uh, terms and conditions. Perfect, and that'll give you a good view of what you can expect. And another thing to point out with ship insurance is they are a third party application. Um, you can always go to their actual platform and even specifically ask them questions because they do have a live chat option. Perfect. Yeah, very important to note that all of these individual uh, kind of services and platforms and things that we offer all have their own help centers as well, and they can definitely help you out. Um, Let's see, our next question here is going to be for the third party billing automation, what if the carrier service is being provided via the API? Do you still need to define the service prior to setting the billing? In that case, are you referring to like if it's, um, let's see. Like if it's already importing as like a requested service. Let's see, whoever, uh, the asker of this question, if you wanna unmute and talk to us, you definitely can, or you can throw it in the chat for us. But I'm assuming the answer would be here. If the carrier service is already populated, you should be able to set uh, the service prior, right? Yeah, if the, so what I'm understanding is like if they already had um, their requested service mapped, 
then you know you could definitely since that is applying as those orders are importing then in that case you could just say hey apply you know the third party billing um i still just to be safe like to do it all in one rule just in case there is you know one of those orders that slips through the crack doesn't have a requested service or you know the correct requested service yeah that's that's a good clarification um Let's see. Uh, I don't sell by products, but by order. How can I tag those? Can you further explain on that? See. I'm thinking that she doesn't have, or she or he or they does not have um, individual products in their order. Um, if you want to speak up, if you want to unmute and ask us uh, our question asker, you definitely can. And yeah, then... hi, that was me, Lisa. Oh, can you hear me? Hey, Lisa. Hi. Yeah, so I use um, PayPal as my um, channel, I guess. Um, so anytime any I you know, receive money via PayPal, it shows up in my ShipStation account. But I run multiple memberships that I don't ship anything to, and they're recurring um you know fees that come in every month how do i not bring those in because they're really making it difficult to find actual orders that come through my e-commerce store yeah um do you have like any identifying like care or I guess identifying factors of how you recognize those orders um from my store or the yeah from your store because with that you know we could create like a do not import rule but you with those you want to be careful you want to make sure that you know this criteria only applies to those certain orders okay um not that i'm aware of <laughs> so I, I have to take a look sorry my <laughs> helper is trying to help <laughs> yeah. um okay yeah so if you can you know even just find a way to identify you know those different orders mm -hmm. um, you know maybe even if they import with no items, you know, it's just like the uh, order information, not including items. We could even say, hey, you know, if the items in the order, you know, are less than or equal to or less than zero, apply a tag. And then you'll at least know, hey, to kind of give those attention first. Okay. Yeah. I actually don't import any, generally, no orders or items import on any of anything. <laughs> so yeah, my e-commerce store is 16 years old. So um, yeah, okay, well, I'll look more into that, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> <That's> so, <perfect. laughs> um, so I have a question here. Um, I'm not sure where we're gonna be able to fully cover this on the live right now but I will make sure to reach out to you. And this is from Melanie. Um, so she asks, she or they, or he asks, uh, I've been having trouble deleting the first stamps.com account we connected. Um, if you're having trouble with that, I'm just gonna take this one. Um, I would reach out to our support team and they might have uh, be able to work with stamps on your behalf to help you get that canceled um, and work with the other account. And then uh, the second question is we've been, we've had trouble making different return addresses appear on labels other than our primary store. And Kendall, would you, uh, would you need more information on that or? Yeah, I would just be sure to check the ship from locations and you know how those are um, configured. And especially if there's multiple ship from locations and, um, making sure to name those different names, which let me share my screen to go over what I'm referring to. Okay, she's saying the ship from is the same. The return addresses are different. So in that case, Kindle, I, I think what you might recommend would be to create two different ship from locations name them differently, like you were saying, with the different returns, and then you can switch that ship from. Okay. Yes. You the can even, yeah, use a rule saying, hey, if the store name is this, apply ship from location A, 
you know, if it's the other store, apply that uh, second ship from. Perfect. Hopefully that answers kind of what you were uh, asking, Melanie, but if it doesn't, please feel free uh, to reach out to our support and I, I will uh, see if I can grab your email and reach out afterwards. Oh, perfect. They're going to go ahead and try that. So uh, if that if that still gives you trouble, go to community.shipstation.com and just make a post and our community team will uh, will look over that and our other users will have suggestions for you as well, I'm sure. Let's see, is there a way to automate pricing? We have a USD website and a Canadian or CAD website and it all overrides to USD currency. We have to manually change every product to the price of price to the conversion rate of the day. That's that's a little tricky. Yeah, I'm looking into that right now. I this made a mistake. It all overrides into Canadian, not into USD. Oh. So we're based out of Canada and everything goes into Canadian, but we're selling the USD dollars and then it just gets flagged at border. So we're like uh, we, yeah so is there a way to override that and just have the usd store charge usd dollars instead of community um i believe so the the currency is going to match what your ship station country code is and so that's why you're seeing it as canada right now we currently only have a way for it to actually display as like usd within the ui so and the reason that is, is whenever we're sending the API calls back over to the carrier to produce those forms, um, they're the ones who are just, you know, matching your country's account code and applying it that way. So I believe that is something that's being worked on. And that's why we've already been able to update it within the UI. We're just trying to get with the carriers to be able to update it, you know, via the actual customs declarations. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for that question. Um, so we have one last question here. Um, and I think I want to uh, ask this to Kindle first. What is the best way to troubleshoot issues when they're not covered in our help center? Uh, that kind of depends on the actual issue itself. So um, probably the most common one I come across is you know, an order is not importing. First steps you need to take are, um, you know, in the upper right-hand corner of your account, you should see like a little circle arrow icon. If you hover your cursor over that, you'll actually see the last date and times your stores were updated. And, you know, that's important to, you know, make sure you're checking, especially if you don't have your all your stores set to auto update. So with that, you know, make sure you click that. If the order still has not imported, checking the order date along with the status and making sure all of the requirements are met. So for example, let me pull up. So like with Etsy, you can say, hey, does that order have a full ship to address? And is it a non-sale order? Order. If it you know, meets both of those criteria, you still see it has not imported then checking the order status. So going into Etsy, is it already showing us shipped? Well, maybe that's why it's not importing. Um, or if it did, it would import into the orders shipped tab on this left-hand side. So, you know, a couple different things to actually check in that um, instance. But again, it kind of depends on the actual, um, you know, what you're troubleshooting. And also, I know I've mentioned the community a few times. I'm a little partial to it myself. You can always post on the ShipStation community. And we have a group of super users who are amazing experts in the platform. And we have members who frequently contribute and help start conversations. And we have an amazing community team. So you can always reach out to us there. And we're always looking for ways to expand and provide new content. Um, Allison, is there a way on your end, if people are running into something that is just causing trouble and they don't find what they're looking for in the help center? 
Yeah, absolutely. On the channel advisor side, um, all of our customers have an account manager, so you can route those concerns through your account manager or via our support team, of course, always, um, if you have issues there. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much. I know that we did go a little bit over time, so my apologies for that, but I bet you will agree with me that it was definitely worth it. Got some really good information today. So thanks again to our amazing panelists, Allison and Kendall for joining us today. You guys were amazing and I am so grateful that you were able to join us. Um, before we go, uh, I would also like to announce the winner of today's giveaway. They will win free ship station for three months. And that winner is Nick Leoto. And I hope I did not butcher your name. Um, so congratulations, credit will be applied to your account. And if you didn't win this time, don't worry, everybody's a winner here. We're sending out a $5 gift card to Starbucks for everyone who attended in a follow-up email that will go out tomorrow with lots of good information for you. Um, before, um, before we end, I want to thank again our sponsors, the amazing Channel Advisor and SKU Vault. This would not be possible without you. And we are doing ship and sip coffee chats every month online. So if you know somebody who would like to be nominated as a highlighted user, or you would like to be highlighted, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn or email the events team at events at shipstation.com. Thanks again. We hope you have a great day and see y'all next time.